Imagine a world where you are part of a community that sees you for all that you bring and propels you to become your very best self. A world where everyone is valued for what they bring and everyone gets the support they need. Saver Exchange brings this dream to reality by empowering individuals, communities and organizations with the right tools and resources to change the world. We do this by organizing people near and far around a goal or project and bringing them together and measuring their success. Our data analytical reports will provide information to support transparency and critical needs in today's world. The SaverX app acts as a secure bridge to multiple communities, including those defined by you, and allows everyone within their community to contribute time through service and request help for themselves. Members can also donate service credits, money, or goods back to their community. Go to www.saverxapp.com to learn more and start your Saver community today. If everybody's sitting, can I get everybody to please stand up? Please stand up. Please stand up. And I do want you to unmute yourself for right now. Everybody unmute. Unmute yourself. Yeah, if you're on mute, if you can unmute yourself. Sharina, if you can unmute, and uh, Vijaya and Marissa, if possible, if you can unmute. Okay, so what we're gonna do, and just follow my lead, I'm gonna start and explain what we're gonna do, and then we're gonna slowly release. We're gonna just start with some nice deep breaths just to start with our relaxation phase. So what I want everybody to do is take a nice deep breath in, big smile here as we do this. If you're outside, definitely look up. If you're inside, I want you to see something beautiful in the horizon, whatever is in your midst, I just want you to picture something wonderful in your life right now. I want you to see something beautiful, okay? So we're gonna, let me show you. We're gonna do an inhale, and we're gonna go, ha. The inhale, and then we're gonna go, ha, 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 three ha, times. Ha. And we're gonna do, ha, 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 Inhale, exhale, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> there we go. And then ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Very good. You're doing great. It's going to feel a little weird at first. That's normal. And then what we're going to do is say, very good, very good. Yay. I'm going to do this three times. Okay. Let's go. Very, very good. good. Very, very good. good. Yay. Very good. 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 Okay, give yourself a big hug. Now you might be wondering why are we doing this? Like the breathing, and this is for relaxation because we know poor energy. What? And I want you to either tap, type it in the chat list, or just tell me. But what zaps energy? What keeps us from having energy? If you can think. What zaps energy? Huh? When they're born, like they're young kids. Young kids, yeah. If you have teenagers, you know that too. <laughs> they're yeah, like kids for sure. Yeah, lots of energy. You can try to play catch up. What else? You can put it in the chat or um just um shout it out. What's that? Yes, right like foods. Foods, yeah. But zaps energy. If you're eating the right foods, that can help it, right? But it, what about junk food? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Anything else? Not getting out. enough sleep. Not getting enough sleep. And we're going to talk about that. And honestly, that's one of those big things. So um, right here, if you haven't put in the chat what you want to learn today, we want to make sure you cover that. Um, so what we're going to talk today, let me just bring it over here. Okay. And every can everybody see my screen? Yeah, I can see you, Tanya. Okay, yeah. perfect. You can see yes. the screen with the little doggy? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> so first, happy World Laughter Day to everybody. And um, has anybody ever heard of World Laughter Day? Say a show of hands. No. Yes. no. Okay, Anita. No? Okay. So for those who don't know, it's the first Sunday of every, um, the month of May. And it was started by Dr. Kataria, who is the founder of Laughter Yoga. He actually wrote the, the forward of my book. 
but he was finding, he's an Indian physician that found that when people were stressed and worried, they didn't smile much. But when they did smile and laugh more, they didn't get sick as much. They actually slept better. They had more energy. And um, going back for my history, I got sick several years back. I had severe neck pain, something called Lyme's disease and uveitis. It's a redness in the eye that's very painful. And it was to the point my doctor said I could go blind if I didn't get on heavy dose steroids. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I also had severe arthritis in my neck to the point they said, God forbid you're in a car accident car accident, you can become paralyzed. So of course I was freaked out. Um, they said you needed surgery soon. I really was reading all the side effects of the surgery because I was so young. They said, if you get the surgery now, it was a fusion, which means the neck is like, feels like a brick. I would probably need more and more surgeries because I was so young and literally I would have a fused spine, which would limit a lot of my activities. So I prayed, <laughs> I cried. I try to figure out what the best way for me to go is, but thank God, I found another way called laughter yoga, where I didn't just, just laugh, but I did, I laugh. But in addition to that, I found a whole slew of healthy exercises. I got in the pool for exercise because um, all the steroids they gave me, because I initially did follow all the instructions. I was getting so fat. I literally gained over like 40 pounds. My pants were ripping. People were congratulating me. Mazel tov, how far along are you? <laughs> so, and thank God, again, fast forward now 13 years, um, no surgery in my neck. I'm not having any pain in my neck. My eye flare up virtually null. I used to get it like several times a year. And my doctor said, you'll keep getting it for the rest of your life. Just keep staying on the drugs. Um, but I don't hardly ever get those anymore either. Thank God. So I know what I'm going to share to you is personal. Um, I found this journey and I feel like it's a calling for me. I'm a medical doctor, um, went to UNC medical school. I also um, did my uh, training in family medicine at UTMB, the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston, Texas. And then I did advanced training in holistic medicine. So I was actually very fortunate to study both because I realized there was a gap. Um, how many people know how much education uh, doctors get in nutrition. If you just had to hazard a guess or put it in. Yeah. <laughs> how many, do you think we get any or like maybe a, an hour, three, two hours or three months, three months, you get zero. I got zero nutrition training. So that doesn't mean it's not changing. I've heard some schools are teaching one or two hours, but you have to remember physicians get thousands of hours of didactics of education training and they're learning about one or two hours of nutrition or maybe a few more, but it's not a lot is what I'm trying to say. So when you go to a doctor, they are doing their best, but what do doctors typically do for you? Nothing. Forgive well, you medicine. Yeah, they give you medicine, right. And if you think yeah. of it, medical school, me medicine. medicine. Yeah. So we were learned to prescribe yeah. and I do have a place. I mean, obviously God forbid you're having a heart attack or having something serious. If I ever break a leg or something happens, I'm going to the hospital and I thank God that there is medicine that can treat me. But in addition, if you have diabetes or high blood pressure or other stuff, is there other things that we can do to manage that besides medicine? Now, again, I'm not saying never to take your medicine or to stop all your meds, but what I'm trying to say is there an integrative or complementary approach that we can adopt that could maybe help us to reach both avenues. Would you agree that there's a possibility? I'm hearing yes. Okay, good. And if you don't agree, that's okay. You're always up to your opinion. But what I'm trying to say is right now, does anyone know how the US ranks in healthcare? Are we at the top of the list or at the bottom? Bottom. You gotta guess. And if you're not sure, you yeah, Debbie just said it. What did you say, Debbie? Bottom. Yeah, we're actually the lowest of the lowest. We're below some third world countries. Yeah. So if yeah, if you actually look at the statistics. So in terms of healthcare, we spend the most per capita. Do you know, do you know how much money we spend on healthcare? Billions. I actually, in my book. It's a lot. It's trillions of dollars. Trillions. Oh. Yeah, I had to look up how many trillion, how many zeros in trillion. If you don't know, it's a lot of zeros <laughs> in trillions. I was like, I think it's thirteen or anyway, it's a lot of zeros. And so what what was happening is we're spending a lot, but we're not actually getting those benefits and not reaping. Because you would think if medicine really made us healthy, shouldn't the person on the most number of medications be the healthiest person? And are we finding that to be the case? So now you got it. So what we're gonna talk about today, 
is how to sleep better, have more energy, and we're going to incorporate some laughter, and I'll explain my book in just a moment. Okay, so does anybody relate to this picture? <laughs> Even if you're retired, could you relate to it when you're younger? <laughs> so if you can, yeah, if you can't see the picture, what, what you, it is is a mom with groceries with a baby. Um, she has a purse, and part of her body is in pants, so it could be a guy as well, just trying to juggle so many things. And just think in your life, whatever you're up to, are you, you know, if you're in a relationship or juggling finances, juggling a business, um, juggling children or grandchildren, uh, just anything, trying to make the meals or trying to stay healthy, up to date, or if you're, you know, older, you might be trying to juggle medications if you're on a bunch or just a bunch, you know, whatever your interest, trying to deal with a lot of different things. What about COVID? Trying to manage life. You know, it's definitely been a change for so many. And I, my heart goes out to everybody's, you know, we've all had to deal with many challenges. So I just want to say I'm here for you. And if you need anything, I'm giving out my information. You can message me in there and I'm happy to get back to you on questions as well. Okay. So sleep, does anybody feel like this with their sleep? If you can just put that in the chat, if you're having, I see yes to that. Yeah. Good or, yeah. yeah. For the energy and the sleep. Anybody at 3 a.m. is like, ah, oh, when am I going to go to bed now? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Right. So, right. so let me, right. hi. Hey, Rosalind. So let me ask you a question. What happens if you don't sleep? What's some of the side effects? Hey, Terry. Hey. If you can put that in the chart or you can just answer. You can just type in the message. What happens if you don't sleep? What happens to the body? I can attest to this. I haven't slept in since having children in at least 15 years. Uh, yeah. My kids say I can't remember anything. My short-term memory is shot. Wow. Yeah. 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 So there is a 30%. There's a study done on this, Anitha, and that's why I want to help you with this. There's a 30% increase in dementia if you're not sleeping chronically. There's 11% of the population in America that don't sleep. And at least once a month, 30 to, um, excuse me, 50 to 60 million Americans don't sleep. So what that means is we do have a crisis on our hands. There's things we can do about it too. So what are some of the culprits that keep us from sleeping? Naps during the day. <laughs> huh? I heard naps during yes. the day. Yeah. <laughs> Grandpa. What uh, was it? Say it again. Type, yes. I've been in the chat too. Sex. <laughs> what uh, else? <laughs> uh, nap, naps during the day. Naps during the day. Yeah, if you oversleep, yeah. can you sleep too much? Yeah. Uh, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if you're taking too long, you can oversleep, especially if you wake up like you were wide awake and then you're like, oh no, I have to go back to sleep. I have to go back to sleep. And you force yourself to sleep up, go back to sleep, and you wake up and you're like, I'm so tired. Do you actually need a certain number of hours of sleep? Does everybody yeah. need a certain number? Yes. Each person, right, but does everybody need the same amount of sleep? No. No. I no. Yeah, it's got to be different. Yeah, and can you sleep? Do you have to sleep at night? No. No. <laughs> so Winston Churchill actually slept when he was tired. He actually did work from his bedroom. <laughs> and then, you know, now with COVID, a lot of people are working from home, too. But honestly, you can take the cat naps that you were just talking about, Terry. You can mm -hmm. rest when you're tired. It's actually okay to do that. As long as you're getting enough rest and you're able to function, that's going to be key parameters. So if you want to jot anything down or take notes, it will help you remember what's going on. But the idea is we don't need a certain number of amount of sleep and the things that can zap sleep. There's a lot of different things. We're going to talk about a few of them, but there's more. What's our big thing that we tend to be on quite a bit? Our phone. Electronics. Yeah. So what about the blue screen? Yep. Does anybody have it on night settings at times? No. Yeah. So you can set it on nighttime. I actually do the nighttime. This is on blue now, but you can set nighttime during the day as well, especially if you're sensitive to light. There are screens you can put on or glasses you can wear, but you can just set the phone on nighttime settings. So if you go to your settings, you can set it to nighttime because that blue light actually affects our melatonin levels and our melatonin is our hormone for sleep so if your melatonin levels are very depleted some people will take melatonin but if you're having an absorption problem or a gut problem you may not be absorbing that melatonin so that's why it's good and important to figure out why something's happening and what to do about it because if it's the cause is a screen that's actually a simple solution you can start to reduce screen time especially right before bed 
And I don't know, I'm not gonna point fingers, but do you know anybody who literally is on their computer or maybe watching TV right before they go to sleep or maybe keep on the TV while they're sleeping? Does anybody do that? I mean, I know I used to do that too. Yeah, we do it quite a bit. Sometimes it's our, what is it? Yeah, sometimes it's our nighttime, like if you're alone or just our comfort. My actually- mom's on this call and she does that all the time. She uses the yeah. TV to fall asleep. <laughs> exactly. Now, again, if you're able to sleep through it, you wake up refreshed. That's not a problem for you, correct? But if people are not having, they're having trouble falling asleep. And I actually had a patient. She said, Dr. Gold, I can't fall asleep. I'm always so frightened before, before falling asleep. I said, what happened? What are you doing? She's watching horror films right before <laughs> so pay attention I know I was like really what do you think yeah. so honestly it's okay to ask them. and the other thing is beverages what do we typically drink that could keep us awake caffeine okay. yeah and do you, does anybody know what the half-life of caffeine is even one cup of coffee I don't want to know I, <laughs> and it's not it to coffee. say you can't drink I know you can still drink your coffee but it does have a long half-life it's 24 hours what I mean by that is if you're sensitive to coffee even if you have one cup in the morning it can still be in your system at night so we know that caffeine again one cup or a few cups can be beneficial for some folks because it does have polyphenols and antioxidants I just recommend trying to do the organic with less pesticides or herbicides um, coffee, regular coffee, it has the one of the highest toxin or pollutants in um, the world. It's the most polluted food. And um, if we just get the regular, it, it's full of like herbicides and fungicides if, when you actually rate it. So it's just one of those things to pay attention because that can affect our immune system. And then also the caffeine can irritate. Can, can it make us anxious? Yes. Yeah. Especially if you drink too much. I know one of my... Um, Medical, in medical school, one of my friends, we ran out of the filters, the coffee filters. She literally started sucking on espresso beans. <laughs> she was so desperate. I know. That taught me like how addictive it's, it, it is a drug. So again, you can use it judiciously, but if you're taking too much of it. What about alcohol? How much is alcohol good for sleep? No. 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 Right. So honestly, it decreases REM. So remember, there's several stages of sleep. And what's important is we get through that, those deep stages. It doesn't mean that some people can't sleep six hours. Some people can't sleep eight. It's that you want to get in that deep sleep with the amount of sleep that you get. And when you get that deep REM sleep, when you get the slow wave sleep, the stage three, you actually are able to process um, memories. You're able to have good brain function as well. And that actually helps with the relaxation. So we're going to do some more relaxation techniques. So if you're sitting right now, I'd like you to stand back up. I need to make it work. Everybody stand up and unmute yourself. If you're on mute, please unmute. We're going to just roll the shoulders back. Oh. And this is something no one actually mentioned, but that can zap energy as well as sleep. And I'm pointing to some areas right now. What can zap? energy and sleep. Uh, I'll just make the sound. Uh, if you're in, <laughs> hey, <Sorry>. yeah. <laughs> so if you're suffering, right? Neck pain, okay. back pain, headaches, just think of any type of pain. Can that keep us awake? So right, right. now we're going to give ourselves a nice little gentle massage. Um, the way to tell if your atlas, which is the top bone of your vertebrae is out, just press right underneath the earlobes, press right underneath the earlobes. If that's a sore spot for you, it's really important to gently massage it and release. And this can happen when we do a lot of texting. So if your head is jutting forward and you're on a, a device, it's good to kind of lean up and put that device up on something rather than leaning forward. So we're gonna just gently massage our neck. Okay, I'm gonna take a nice deep breath, big smile here. I'm gonna roll those arms back, roll those arms back. Good, let's take a deep breath in and go, ah. Uh, uh, there you go, let's I'm do it again. Big smile, a say, ah. Uh, 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 your time, ah. Uh, uh, there we go. And we're gonna just reach, 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 all the way up and over, reach over to one side. Oh, there we go. There we go, reach up, 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 reach, see if you can get as tall as you can now, get as tall as you can. Come on, your tippy toes, tippy toes, tippy toes. Get as tall as you can, as tall as you can. There we go, there we go, you can do it, you can do it. Good, and then reach all the way over to the other side. 
all the way. Good, and then gently back. Oh, and release. Good, shake, shake the body. This is actually something I learned from my sister. She always said she's a personal trainer and she always said, we're gonna do some fast feet. So I just want you to tap your feet. We're gonna pump our arms, pump our arms. And remember activity or movement no, doesn't have to take long. Yeah, it's like, it's like you're running. It's like you're running. It's just a happy run here, okay? <laughs> happy run, happy run. Big smile, don't, let me see those cheeks. Let me see those cheeks. Show me your teeth, 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 teeth. There you go, Cam, let me see those teeth. There we go. And we're gonna go to the side, go to the side. Go on, you can do it, you can do it. We're gonna turn around, turn around. Turn around, turn around, there we go, yeah. yay, one more time, turn around the other direction, turn around, turn around, get all the way to the front, there we go, and relax, oh, let's take another nice breath. Woo! see, honestly, 13 seconds, 15 seconds, yeah, you get a workout, yeah, it feels so good for the body, it's actually, exercise is the number one way to fall asleep, what is that, Oh, hey, Grandpa. Hey, Dana. So you may not actually fall asleep right after exercise because it releases endorphins. But if you do activity first thing in the morning, and if you're like, I'm not a morning person, you do activity sometime during the day, it can make a huge difference in the body. It doesn't have to be much. And what I started doing is just playing some uplifting music and start moving my body. You can call it what you like. Some people will say dance. Some people will say movement. Some people say activity, exercise. It doesn't matter the wording. The most important part is the doing. Because what they find is even a few minutes every day makes a huge difference. And my grandpa, I can honestly say he exercises. He's 103. He exercises mm -hmm. every day. They take him for walks. They take him for movements. If he can do it, and honestly, everybody has 10 minutes. If you don't have 10 minutes in your day, you don't have a life. So we'll, we'll talk after. Please definitely chat me if you can, don't, can't find 10 minutes in your day. But everybody can move for at least 10 minutes. And what we're finding in the guidelines, even 10 minutes can lower your risk for a heart attack or stroke. It lowers your risk for mortality. And it actually helps you sleep better so you can feel better. The other thing, what are some other things that can zap energy and reduce sleep? Mm. Mm, we talked about caffeine. Snoring. People snoring. Oh. Snoring, yeah, honestly. And actually, I love my husband, but he can snore. I actually snore sometimes. Uh, and this is a secret. Well, it's not a secret now. Everybody knows. My cat snores. Oh my gosh. I, yeah, and he's pretty loud. I used to blame Drew, and it wasn't Drew. It's my cat. And he oh like, uh, flies uh, right next to me. And so I'm like, what do I do? So I actually looked it up online because I was like, what do I do? There's apparently kitty pack. They actually have kitty pack for cats. Yeah. So we can honestly put these strips on these cats. You can do this for your spouse as well. But the nasal strips, just to open up. A lot of times when they're snoring, it's because their nose, they have little bones inside the nose that get swollen. Now they could have allergies. So it's a good idea to check them for allergies. Work up with a sleep study because honestly, if their uvula, which is that um, little piece of tissue that hangs down the back of the throat, if it's too thick, it can kind of pulse back and forth. So those are some things that you can actually treat. And the nice part is people can get better so you can sleep better. For me right now, I do wear earplugs at times, but you know, you can find some healthy balance, what works for you. So the, the person who's hearing the snoring can get some sleep. And then the person who's having the trouble can get worked up. Now, sometimes it can come from weight. So if you are having some trouble with losing weight or getting you know, stronger, healthy, you just feel so tired to exercise, it's good to check your hormones because we oftentimes have folks, their hormones are so out of sorts and we know whatever um, foods we're eating, a lot of times if it's processed meats, they put, there's um, some hormones in some of those meats as well, then we're ingesting it or how the animals are treated. If they are um, in tight pens, then their cortisol levels or stress hormones can be very high. And then when we're eating those animals, our stress hormones can go very high as well. So I do want you to think right now, I'm gonna ask another question, what you focus on. So we're gonna move on to the next slide. Oh, actually before this, where are you heading out of the scale of one to 10, just put a number down, 10 being the highest of health where you feel sleeping well, high energy, life is 100% where you want it to be, you're living life on your terms, you feel fabulous, that's a 10. One's very minimal. Don't put zero, zero means you're not with us, but somewhere between one and 10, where would you put your health right now? <laughs> yeah, where would you put, you can put halvesies if you need to. 
Anya, I, I know you didn't mention it, but I, for me, it's not all the other things. For me, it's just, I can't shut off my brain. Mm. Yeah. I love that you just said that. I totally, I, I totally agree. When okay. I lay down, I start thinking really, really fast and about everything. Right. So honestly, the shutting down the brain, and we're going to do a three-day challenge for everybody, and we do um, enter drawing for a $50 Amazon gift card. So if you are interested, make sure you put your email um, in the chat. And then um, we'll have some other raffles and prizes, an autograph book, as well as um, a sleep guide and supplement guide. So first, with shutting down the brain, we can never turn it off unless you're dead. But what you can do is quiet the mind. So I want you to think of a radio. We have to practice this. So we're going to do a few steps right now that can help. The breath is a conduit to that. So I want you to think of something in your mind right now. If it's like blah, 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 and some what I want you to hear now is that it's quieting down. So I want you to, if you can think, visualize something comforting for you, that's um, either a beautiful person in your life right now, just see them right in front of you, smiling at you. And I want you to see them holding you right now, really holding you, giving you love, their utmost of love and endearment. And I want you to just gently start with some slow, deep breaths from the belly. So when we take a nice deep breath in, we're gonna inhale and inflate the belly. If it doesn't work, it's okay. The easiest way to do this is just through laughter. So we're gonna start, we're gonna start with the breath and then I'm gonna introduce the laughter. And then we're gonna do a long, slow, ah. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do it with a laugh now. We're gonna inhale and go, ha 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 <laughs> you know what we sound like. <laughs> uh, and everybody yeah. say, very good, very good. Very good. Yay. Yay. Let's good. do that three more times. Very good. Very good. Yay. Again. Very good. Very good. Yay. Yay. One more time. Very good. Very good. Yay. So let me ask you a question because you asked a very good question, Anita, and Terry, you've chimed in as well. How do you feel when you're a kid? You can think back way back when. How are we doing when we were playing or having fun? How was our minds? Were we on like many places or we were focused? Just focus on what we're playing. Yeah, yeah. we we're definitely we're focused. Started. And now yeah. as adults, how often do we actually play? <laughs> Shit, at my age. <laughs> <laughs> so is it possible? What did you say? Uh, oh, that, that's our uh, mom in the background. Oh, hey, sweetie. <laughs> So my question to you is, is it possible to still add some playfulness into our lives? And I know people who- be around your grandkids and everything, yeah. yeah exactly, them. and play with them, right? We're not gonna get on our yeah. cell phones, we're actually gonna physically be with them. And if they wanna play video games, we play video games. But I want you to start, it's a practice. So that's why when we say yoga or Tai Chi or a mind-body connection, the breathing or the laughing too. So actually the fastest way I know, and this is how I got out of the pain that I was in because I was focusing on the pain and that's why it made it worse. I started focusing on health or healing. So on my next slide, let me get to it. Where are you focusing on in your life right now? What are you doing? And think about any challenges you're going through right now in your life, what you're dealing with. And we, I know it's a lot of stuff. So, and for each person, it's different. So again, I would never say that I understand what you're going through. I could just say that explain what I've been through and challenges in my life. Um, my mom completed her life when I was little. I was 13. My other sister was 10. Um, she was 40. Uh, she died of a brain aneurysm. My um, other challenges have been the illnesses in my life that kind of came when my 20s. I was pretty healthy prior to that, but I got sick when I was um, in my late 20s and my 30s, and um, I wasn't able to keep jobs because I was too sick. So I had a, I was struggling financially for a little bit. But I thank God now, I look at them now as solutions or blessings because it helps me relate to my patients. It also got me started with my own practice. Um, you can see at Dr. Gold's Optimal Living Institute, that was a dream of mine for a long period, but I didn't have the courage initially to, to get it going. And then when I got sick, I realized I had to do this. I wanted to share that there is our natural solutions or healthier 
ways to get better long-term. And um, I use an integrative approach. So obviously if people need medicines, I prescribe, but I also introduce healthy eating, activity, playful movements, laughter, joy, ways, stretching, ways that people can get well long-term. So just think about in your life right now, where are you? What are you focusing on? Is it serving you? Is it helping you? So I want you to jot down one thing, any challenge in your life right now, whatever it is, put it down. If there's more than one, don't go to 10 or 20, just pick one or two. Because honestly, if we focus on so many things, we can get overwhelmed too, just by that. And you're not going to sleep tonight. And the goal today is I want you to sleep. So <laughs> we're going to have some fun. <laughs> so just pick one thing. And I want you to ask yourself right underneath, what can I do about it? And sometimes, honestly, people what tell me, I don't like the weather. They live in Florida. <laughs> so I'm going to repeat that. Some people tell me they don't like the weather. It's too hot in Florida. Well, oh, come on. That's the weather, so you can't really control that. <laughs> so sometimes we do. We have to work on letting things go because some things are out of our control. It might be a place you work at, but, you know, honestly, do you have to work there? Do you get to work there or can you change your approach? Maybe if you love what you do, you might be looking at some things a little differently. So you can maybe adding some fun music if you're, you know, working on your taxes or you just finished and it was like, oh, can you do it a different way? I know with cleaning the house, I add my music. It makes it fun. But just any challenges in your life right now, what are you focusing on? Mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. Huh? Mine is being able to walk. Yeah. So if you're having trouble walking, the idea is why and then working on getting that solution. So if it is building some strength in your legs, we can start working on that. For other folks, I actually certify people for cannabis. So some people, it's just getting out of the pain. They'll use it topically. So we can use just the CBD, the hemp base or people with seizures. It can help a lot of folks. So figuring out what's going on, it really does help with sleep as well as energy. Minus my spine with arthritis and I can't do it. Yeah. And and remember, arthritis can be healed, as I told you in my story. I had, I had an 80-year-old neck, is what I was told. So I had um, basically the herniation, and I also had arthritis. The herniation was touching the spinal cord. So that's why they said I was one car accident away from paralysis. But the idea is, even with arthritis, you can start to work to lengthen and strengthen the muscles around the arthritic areas, and then they're not rubbing as much. So Building strength and exercising, even gentle exercise in a pool or yoga can actually help the arthritis. And what the American Association, um, the Arthritic Foundation found is it's not going to hurt you to exercise. It's actually going to help you. Even if it's painful, go through that painful um, rendition doing those exercises, and then it actually starts benefiting you. So you'll literally just have a little threshold of feeling uncomfortable, but then you can start feeling better. But again, I'm happy to work with you if you need help with that. Let me know. Okay. Five, my five discs in my spine, last five discs, are bone on bone. Right. You can do something about it is what I'm trying to say. I've actually worked with folks. Uh, if you have something to work, let me know. I'll try to more. Yeah, yeah. So Terry, you can tell her to get in touch with me. Okay, Go so going on, what do you see here? And you probably, have, who has seen this photo before? You can raise your hand if you've seen it. Anybody see? Yeah. 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 Right. Who has seen this photo before? Who has I, not seen this photo? Raise your hand. Who has not seen it? Okay. So for those who haven't seen it or have seen it, I want you to think about what you're seeing right now. And you can put it in the chat what you're seeing or just say it out loud. But what do you see in that picture? It looks like the butt of a panda bear. It looks like a butt of a panda bear. I love it. She's hilarious. What else does it look like? A woman with a hat. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Is it a young woman or an older woman? Old woman. <laughs> I still see. Huh? Old woman. <laughs> see both? Cam, yeah. what do you see? I know you haven't seen this before. Cam, what do you see? I see a lady from the 20s. Okay. And what they did, they did a study on this. The people that were in the younger That's age the saw woman. the young woman. Cam, if you look right here, let's see if this will work. Uh, my pointer might not work as much. I'm going to try it again. Oh, here it is. Okay. If you look right here, that's the mouth of an older woman, and I'm outlining the chin. So kind of if you um, look right down here, see a chin and then a nose, and this would be the hat on the outside. Mm -hmm. So it can, 
Do you see yeah. what I'm saying? I see it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. why I'm saying that is it's an older woman on one perception. If you look at this other part of it, that would be the nose of the younger woman. This would be the chin of the younger woman. And that would yeah. be her neck. But it could be the young woman as well. So why, why this is important, it's not if you saw this picture or not, it's your perception of something that's same, same reality, but different perspective of what we're looking at. So examples, my husband loves to fly. I don't know if anybody in the room doesn't like to fly or gets a little nervous, but he's been on airplanes where literally people are gripping tight and you know thinking, oh my God, it's gonna be the end of their life getting on this airplane. Same airplane, same parameters, they're still you know, climbing through the air and everything, different perception. And the same with COVID, we're actually finding folks going through COVID literally thriving in their businesses right now. They are making loads. And it's not just making money, but they're happy. They're with their families. They're looking at the perspective of what they gained during this time. And I do want you to think of some of the blessings in your life because that is important. But then there's other folks that are net devastated. And I understand both. I'm not you know, discounting one or the other, but what I'm trying to say is what's the difference? Why is one person, and they could almost be in the same settings, even business-wise, I've seen folks, um, even doctors who literally their whole practices were dismantled during COVID. And I've seen other uh, doctors practices, literally they're getting even more patients than they had before. So what, what's different? I just different? want to do a check. We have about a little over 15 okay. minutes. Okay, I'll wrap up. Okay. Thank you for that. So how's everybody doing first? How's everybody doing? Is everybody getting something out of this? Yeah, I think there's a couple yeah. questions in the chat. Oh, there is. Oh, thank you, honey. Um, let me see. I apologize. I'm still learning how to do this part. Um, let's go down. Okay, so I'm seeing, okay, more energy. What's the best food? Okay, yeah, let's talk about the foods for energy and saying the same, and then we'll get some more laughter as well, and I'll talk about my book. Say the same thing or doing the same thing over and over. Yeah, absolutely, if you do that. Okay. So some foods for energy, let me answer that right now. Um, first, I want you to think of any energy foods that you're doing right now, because we did talk about caffeine, but is that a really good one to use on a regular basis? <laughs> as you do. So um, caffeine on a small amount, like one cup of coffee or so, as long as it doesn't affect you with your heart or indigestion or anything like that, or palpitations or sleep, then you should be okay. But if you're drinking, and I would recommend the organic just because of the pesticides, but if you're actually drinking lots of coffee, more than four cups is what the, the guidelines say. If you're doing more than 400 milligrams, four energy drinks, remember the combination of all that. And then the other part to add is sugar. So if we do processed sugar, a lot of it, it gives us energy, but it also zaps our energy because it impairs our immune system for about six hours. So if you have a candy bar or eat anything that's rich in processed sugars, you may feel good in the moment and it releases endorphins, but what tends to happen, or dopamine, but what tends to happen is we start feeling worse later because we get sluggish and that's why we want more of it. Um, the other concern with processed food is the leptin. So remember, leptin is a hormone. It tells us when we're full and ghrelin tells us when we're hungry. What happens when you do high fructose corn syrup or processed sugar, it does the opposite. It makes us hungry, especially at night, and it makes us crave carbs, and bad carbs and also the high fatty foods. That's why you get the munchies when you're, it's late at night, you're like, food, I want pizza. I want whatever's on the commercials, right? Um, but good foods that can nourish you is good proteins. So if you're ever like, what can I eat? That's a good snack. I love nuts and there are lara bars and they're easy to pack. They're just one or two ingredient foods and they have organic. So they have cashews and they have almonds or, uh, other nuts in there and they have dates, which are really good. So it's fine to pick a snack that makes sense for you. I actually make my little uh, fudgicles. So I make um, with cacao and uh, coconut cream. I just make my own little ice cream kind of pouches. Ooh, that sounds out. good. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> and that's what I have. And you can have that, actually, right? Banana ice cream. Thank you. No, I love it. And uh, fruit, you can make real fruit popsicles. So I've literally made watermelon. Uh, juice and freeze that into popsicles. You can, or use ice cream trays. You can do the same thing with real fruit blueberries. I just mash it up and put it maybe with a little bit of water, but honestly, you can just do real blueberries or any fruit that you love, mix it up. And honestly, for the kids, you can put in some vegetables. They won't even know if you put a little bit of cabbage or a little bit of spinach because it's so dark. And I've done that for my, my family. They didn't even taste it. And it was like, this is good. 
So you can actually put in some nice healthy snacks for you or the family that can be, you know, just on the go. If you're going to take it, like obviously popsicles will melt, but you can do like hummus packs or cut up vegetables. My sister was telling me about that. It's so easy. You don't have to cut up everything or you can just eat. Like I honestly just eat a pepper. <laughs> you don't have to cut it off. <laughs> so, but if you're eating good protein with some good vegetables, it's going to give you sustained energy rather than doing this to you. Because if you have the processed sugars or the, um, the caffeine, it's going to wear off. And then what's happening is your body says more, more. And then you might suck on espresso <laughs> beans or who knows what else you might do. <laughs> Cough. Well, look at Starbucks <laughs> line. That was a good <laughs> example. Mochaccino grande. <laughs> So, you know, just to get back. <laughs> okay, let me make sure I answer the question. I'm going to do some more laughter. And let me just tell you a little bit about my book. So um, let me go to the slide here. So I wrote this book after I got sick, because I really, again, wanted to share with folks what was happening in my body and just let them know that they can heal. So remember, you never have to identify with a disease, never have to have it own you, like say, I am a diabetic, or I have diabetes or I have high blood pressure. Instead, it's fine to say I'm in training for feeling amazing. I'm in training for getting better, getting healthier, and even having a little vision board somewhere you can look at daily to see yourself getting well, getting stronger and healthier every day. So what are you grateful for in this world? I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my beautiful social, social media manager on here, Anitha, all these people that are watching. Thank you, Christine and Terry and Daniel and Sherry and Pam. Thank you, Vijaya. Thanks, Sharina. Thank you, Connie. Um, thanks, Miranda and Debbie and Dana. Thanks, Chuck. Just all the beautiful people on this call. My husband, who is amazing. He's helped me get through so much and been by my side even when I was wacky and crazy and bitchy. Um, also, my little kitty, I know, I can get crazy too, if you can believe it, my sister knows, <laughs> my husband definitely knows, but my um, beautiful cat, Princey, who's been through a lot, we, our cat completed their, we had two cats before, and our other cat, Bella, completed her life, but we realized, you know, death is part of, part of life, it's a transition, so understanding that she's still with us, we get to take her wherever we go, I do the same thing with my mom, I love her so, and she helped me write my book too. So she was her words, a lot of her, my, the words in my book comes from her. This is my beautiful niece. She gets me to <laughs> smile. I got to update this with Elena now and all my other nephews and nieces. I have beautiful nephews and nieces and just beautiful cousins and aunties and just a beautiful family and friends and yoga students. I'm very blessed and patient. Okay, so this is going to be the wrap up and I'll show you the book in a moment. So just remember the word mad and you might say, what? I don't want to remember mad, but it's an acronym. <laughs> so we don't want to be mad. We want to be glad, but remember mad for the acronym. So mindset, what we think about, what we focus on, is it serving us? And what can we start thinking about that can serve us if, if what we're doing is not working? And then action, are you making progress? It's fine to mimic other people who are doing this. So again, call on me, ask me questions find mentors, coaches, anybody to help you. I, my dad for the longest said he needed to exercise until we got him a trainer. He really wasn't doing to his extent. Then he started exercising and moving and doing the stuff he needed to do. So we all need our coaches or mentors or people in our life to push us or nudge us in a good way. The other thing is, are you staying disciplined? So decide means to cut off any other possibilities. You probably heard it with burning the boats. There's no option. You got to fight. You got to work for it. It's not going to be easy. I, I honestly, success is not easy. People who are successful will do, will do what others won't. And this does not mean cheating or lying or doing bad things. It means doing good things. It means doing the little things that sometimes suck. <laughs> doesn't always feel good to wake up and work out. I honestly sometimes don't want to. I just want to roll over in bed. But I still do it because I want to feel better. And um, it's important to take care of you. Um, this is just a side note with lack of sleep. Besides the memory, it does age you because what happens is you get higher cortisol, which actually eats up the elastin in your skin. So remember those puffy eyes, the rings around the eyes, the swelling and all that can come from lack of sleep. So really, you know, not just for vanity reasons, but sleep is recovery. It's a time for letting the body heal. So it helps with memory. It helps with the heart healing itself. It helps with blood pressure, blood sugar. So when people are not sleeping, we're and it can take longer to recover from an illness or an injury if you're not sleeping. So really, really important that we get good sleep 
for us. And again, you can sleep when you're tired, but you can sleep the certain number of hours that your body needs or nap during the day is okay to do those things. Okay, if you wanna do the three-day challenge, I'm gonna give the details in an email. So just put your email and I'll send you all the instructions for the three-day challenge. We will be having another uh, Amazon gift card for that. So if you complete the three-day challenge, we'll be entering you in a drawing for a $50 Amazon gift card. So, and then we'll also have some gifts and prizes um, if you um, enter the ch challenge as well. So just put your email in there. Oh, is there a better alternative for coffee? Yes, Ticino. I'm gonna actually put this in the chat. Has everybody heard of Ticino? No. Nope. Nope. Yeah, no? No. Okay. Okay. no. no, so I'm gonna put this in the chat to everybody. No, I haven't it. heard of Ticino. Yeah, it's spelled T-E-E, -E, like teeing off in golf, T-Chino, C-I-N-O, T-E-E-C-I-N-O. And is the reason this is Ticino, you can get it online. And again, if you have any problems with any of this, just call me on my information's up there. If you ever look me up online, Tanya with an A, gold like money. Let's be rich in our health, <laughs> rich in prosperity. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so let me see hey, anything else. Yeah. Thank you, Dana, for sending this. Yeah, so Ticino is my go-to for coffee. It's an herbal uh, flavored tea, but it, it has coffee flavors. So it's really, it lowers um, cholesterol. It will not um, cause the heart to race. It actually tastes good, I, I think personally. And then it also can also help you feel calm and relaxed. So it can help you with sleep. So if you wanted a hot beverage before bedtime, you could drink that. All right, in the last slide, and thank you so much, Anita. Let's go over here. It's thinking. We can talk about the book um, in the next session. Next, so. Yeah, we're gonna have one more session, which is gonna be more on laughter. So what, what the laughter is gonna do is start to change our mindset so we feel better, more endorphins on the body. This was mainly on the energy, sleeping better, but we're gonna be focusing on joy and um, changing our spirit. So if you have been suffering this year, been a lot of stress, which again, totally understandable, we're gonna start to switch the networks. Remember, you can actually, start to rebuild that nervous system and start to create or sprinkle in joy um, in the body, retraining the brain. And it's okay to ask yourself, how, how, I've, how have I been conditioned up until now? What have, what have I been feeding my mind on a daily basis? Am I turning on the TV? Okay. Is news? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Am I listening to certain people that do this to me? Like, ah, or have I been, um, putting in nourishing healthy foods in my system that are calming? Have I actually been playing relaxing music? Have I been doing some meditation? Have I been doing any yoga, Tai Chi, playing a musical instrument? Just finding for you what works for you to relax and decompress that's healthy for you. Okay. Oh, thank you, Pam, for joining here. Okay, so the book again is about joy. It's a uh, practical advice on, and it's real stories. You'll hear my story as well, but there are a lot of other people in there that have been through great things that have overcome. We have um, one of the Congresswomen, the Arizona Congress, Congresswoman who's actually been shot in the head and she, but it's not yeah. gory stuff. It talks about how she overcame and just found joy in life. And another gentleman, Victor Frankel, you know, who, who wrote Man's Search for Meaning, he literally was in a concentration camp and found joy. It's like, how is that possible? But that's, you know, stuff we'll explain. So the idea is, is happiness a choice? Is happiness a choice? Okay, I did put in the chat the next Zoom link because we do have a separate Zoom link for that. Okay. So if everybody's interested, the Zoom uh, link is on and I'll be um, at, right at the hour, I'll be changing over. But if anybody has any last minute questions, let me know. I'm going to give you everyone my, um, the last part is my email. And again, if you want to enter for the um, raffles, just send, send your email. And let's see if the next one will go through. Okay, so this is my contact if you need to get a hold of me. And again, I do. Um, I'm best if you text me, honestly, I'm not a great person with emails, but if you text me and that number is textable, the 813-379-7092. Obviously, if you do send an email, just give me a little page to send you back and the response. But if you text me that you emailed me, I'll, I'll go ahead and definitely <laughs> check it. 
Uh, thank you for doing that. Okay, got it. Let me make sure I've got everybody's questions. All right, and again, thank you so much for being on the call. This meant a lot to me. I really, for me, it's about giving back and adding value to other people. If I can get people to sleep better, it's so critical because we know if we're not sleeping, we get on the road, we can, God forbid, get in an accident or get injured. Um, we cannot think as clearly, we don't make as good decisions. So, so critical. And remember a state of mind. I wanted to share one more thing about sleep. Um, say good night to insomnia. Say good night to insomnia is a great book. I think they have it on audio. It's a Harvard study that found a lot of mindset affecting sleep. When you thought you slept only four hours, even if you slept eight, but you thought you slept four hours, how exhausted you felt and vice versa. And the idea is when you wake up, even if it's three in the morning, start your day, don't look at the clock. Turn the clock around, start your day. Don't train yourself not to sleep by just staring at a clock. Get up, start your day. It's actually, yeah. that's how I finished my book. I was able to get up early and just start writing from three to five. I was wide awake and it felt so good. And then I would just go to bed early if I was tired or a nap if I need to. Say good night. Let me write the whole thing to insomnia. Okay. Any other questions? I have a quick question. Yeah. I hey, Daniel. feel like whenever I'm driving, hi, it's, I always feel really sleepy whenever I'm driving. Mm -hmm. Like, especially if it's going to be 20 or 45 minutes, like any prolong, it just makes me, and I have heard, somebody told me that driving puts you in a different brainwave pattern that's it's more relaxed. And I'm just like afraid sometimes I'm <laughs> going to have to pull over and take a nap or something like that. Right. So a few things you can do first, make sure you're hydrated. The other part is music like having a real like upbeat playlist that like you're rocking it out, singing and stuff like that. Also pay attention to the route if that's a possibility. Cause oftentimes if it's literally just kind of the, the route doesn't have a lot of interesting scenery, we could kind of literally, if it's just like thinking of Arizona, you're just going straight, straight, straight. And there's, well, actually Arizona is just there is beautiful, but just maybe Vegas or a place that's just a straight road where you don't see much difference that can affect our mindset as well. If it's just like a dirt road without, meant much contrast but the other part we can do is um talk just to make sure if we need to evaluate your nutritional status your hormone levels just to make sure all that's good for you too so you're not um, zoning out while you're driving you do need a little caffeine at times that's okay as well just we're not doing excessive but you can have a little caffeine as well if you needed that thank you again for joining all right. Okay.